Welcome to part five of our Link G4X mini training tutorial series here. We're gonna be taking a look in this tutorial at working with our data logging. We can work with onboard or laptop style data logging. So we're gonna explore both options and how to properly configure things so that we have our data logging working in the background as expected. We have a lot to cover here. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our data logging basics with our PC Link software and our Link G4X systems. Now our data logging is gonna be an invaluable tool we use for not only tuning, but for data analysis. We might wanna see what's going on after we come in from the pits on the racetrack, um, or if we're making a pull on the dyno, we can play back the dyno run or the track run and figure out very specific bits of information for doing fuel tuning, spar timing tuning, looking at sensor data. Maybe we're having a problem, an intermittent issue, um, we can track what's going on within the data logging. Data logging essentially is gonna be capturing all the channels that you would find in your runtime values as you can watch and look at when you're live with the vehicle. You can play these back in a file format. It's kind of the same idea if you're looking at a recorded video and you're playing that back, you have that visual representation of what you filmed in the video. Same kind of concept here. You're playing back something that you can go through in detail and pay attention to lots of different uh, specific information that you couldn't otherwise watch or see during, let's say, a dyno pool or a track run. So we have two different ways we can work with data logging. We have both a laptop logging option and a onboard logging option. Now laptop logging is generally gonna be what you have for most of the cases doing tuning and calibrating, especially if you're on a dyno, um, it's going to fulfill pretty much 95% of what you need for doing the tuning or interfacing with your link system. However, if we're in racing conditions, drag racing, circuit track racing, we don't want our laptop in the car. And if we're not laptop logging, then we can onboard data log. We'll be capturing specific channels that we select in a list. We'll look at that very briefly here in this tutorial that allows you to then store those data channels to a file format. Same thing as what we would PC data log with our laptop connected, but we'll doing that and we'll store it to an onboard memory. We can retrieve that back when we come back, back into the pits and go through all the information. There might be other reasons you wanna work with your onboard logging. We can log at a much faster sampling rate up to a thousand hertz on many channels. That allows you to look at something like knock control or something else that's fast moving such as a, uh, a shock travel sensor and being able to see that in a finer resolution and detail than we otherwise could with a laptop connected doing the data logging. So you actually could capture more information, there's more samples per second available if you configure it that way on your onboard logging. So what we're gonna do here first is take a look at how we can work with our PC logging. First thing we need to do is jump up here into our logging option, and then we're gonna go up here into our setup logging. This is gonna allow us to set up both our laptop logging and our onboard logging. We can see our window pops up here. If we go into PC logging here, we're gonna find that we have a couple options that we can select. We're gonna find that the rate it's going to log out here is gonna be 40 hertz or 40 samples per second. That's gonna be sufficient. We typically don't need to change that, although you could go and you could log at slower speeds, but 40 hertz is typically more than sufficient for doing most tuning and calibrating uh, purposes. So I'm gonna leave the rate here at 40 hertz. The control here is gonna be manual, meaning we're gonna manually turn on the logging. Pretty simple there. And then we're gonna find that at the online sample history, this is gonna be adding a certain number of samples at the start of the PC log. Um, this is just gonna make sure that it's capturing some data before you initiate the data log. And then the log parameters are gonna be everything we find in this gigantic list you should find that this is populated with pretty much every runtime channel value that you have with your link. You wanna be able to log as much information as possible. Even if you don't think the information is gonna be relevant, the channel will still be there for your ability to review at a later point in time. So we can see this is default configuration in the software. I'm not gonna change anything here. If I wanted to add some channels, I could go through here and use my navigation tree or type in my specific channel here and it'll auto search it. If we do find something we wanna add, we would select it here and then we would use our arrow button to transfer it for the log parameters in our PC logging. Now, we can work with the PC logging in two different ways or initiate the log to happen. We can, eat, we can go into, if we take a look here at our live time plot, we could click F8 
which is going to keystroke it to start that PC data log here. Alternatively, we could go up into logging and we can go in here to our record option. And we can also then go to stop and we can play the data log back if we choose to do so. Let's take a look at this real quick. Now I am live with the vehicle, so we need to have the engine running. We don't actually have to have the engine running, but typically we want to have the engine running. I have the engine running in this case. Um, so I'm key on engine running. We can see I'm online right now. The engine speed here is we're just at idle conditions, roughly 800. We see we're pulling about 38 kPa of, uh, of map pressure vacuum. And if I go up here to logging and I go to record, notice that my time plot is going to start to generate with some data here. It's recording information as we're in idle conditions. So what we can see here is the PC log is equal in record and we're in online state. Now, I've recorded some data and information right here. If I go to logging and I go to stop, it's gonna stop that, in that data log stream. So we can see the PC log is now off. I can go back through here and actually play back the data log. We have this bar and time sweep down here at the bottom. This is how long we were data logging for. So I'm actually able to go in here and take a look at any bit of information in this time plot. Now this time plot is gonna be showing engine speed, TPS, MGP, lambda, air fuel, target, ignition angle. We have a whole bunch of, of bits of information streamed in here. We can move into our general log with the link page layout and we can see a lot more information in here. The navigator option down here at the bottom will allow us to zoom in and focus and pan through the data log in a very specific manner. Our parameters list here allows us to have a whole bunch of information listed here that we can simply, if we click through, you're gonna notice that these values could and will change and they'll follow to wherever you have your cursor position here in your time plot. So we can create our own custom time plots to have our own field of data here being generated into a time plot window that we wanna see. So graphical information is oftentimes useful to see it plotted in here. And then the parameters will allow us to tag along more channels than what we can plot in our time plot here, allowing us to have that further review. So just getting started here with our PC logging and Link does an excellent job with data analysis and the logging capability. Um, this is some of the best I've worked with across pretty much all standalones. So it is definitely top tier in terms of data logging and the capability. So we've created a data log. Now how do we actually retrieve the data log if we want to take the next step and save it? We'll go up here to our log file manager on the side and we can see here that we have our PC log data. If we click on this, we can actually save it. So we're clicked on this option here. We can go up here and we can save this specific data log. So we're going to go up here. If we want to go save our data log, we'll go save our log file. And this is going to be where we can go into our logs folder and save this. Now what I like to do here is create a folder for the project I'm working with. I'll call this EPA and we'll say um, civic EG. And then what we'll do here is save this data log into my folder. So this is the data log into my project folder and I know it's associated to my specific vehicle. That way I can go back and I can retrieve that at another point in time. Now the data logs are gonna be auto saving in a time format here. So they're gonna show uh, the time stamping in the structuring here. If we go back and we do a save real quick, we can either use the file structuring in the saving that they have defaulted, or we can give it its own custom unique name. So if we go up here into file open, we can actually retrieve a data log and play that back. We can see here it's going to be the year and the date and the time stamp associated in that data log. You'll notice that this PC log is labeled PC log and an ECU log will be labeled ECU log. We'll look at that here in just one minute. But we can change this. We can resave this specific naming here if we don't want the year and the date and the time stamping, which is usually what I prefer. We can name this something custom if we want to do that. I'm not gonna do that right now. But we get the idea of being able to play back different data logs. We can go here and select if we had multiple data logs. We could click on different data logs, which will load them in our time plots, and we can use that for analysis purposes. So that's really briefly laptop data logging. Now, how do we work with the onboard data logging? It's a little bit different. So what we're gonna have to do here is move up into our logging area, and we're gonna do the setup logging option here again, and we're gonna move into setting up our onboard logging, is what they're calling our ECU logging. If we go here to enable, we have our default frequency. This is going to be what we log the channels that we select here at in our list as the default sampling rate. 50 hertz is 50 samples per second. 
a thousand hertz would be a thousand samples per second. Now, it's great to be able to log things at high speed here, but it does come at the cost of larger file size and less available onboard memory. So just keep that in mind. 50 hertz is pretty sufficient for most channels. Things that we might wanna log at these faster rates are things like our knock control channels or wheel speeds, something that's fast moving. Something like battery voltage or coolant temperature don't move very quickly and therefore we could actually log them at a lower speed. But if we just say 50 kind of as the average logging speed, that'll be sufficient for most situations. We can always specify our specific frequency we wanna log at over here once we populate some channels. There are some additional things to consider. That's gonna be when we want the onboard logging to turn on. Now we can do that based on a switched input, turning it on and off. We can also do that based on RPM, throttle, map, and there's also an off delay, so it's gonna have a buffer time before it actually turns off the onboard logging. What I'm gonna do is not set it up based on a switched input here, but I'll set it up based on just RPM and TPS conditions. So if we don't want these other map or off delay to be a factor, just leave these values at zero. On the RPM above, I'll set it saying 2000 RPM and above is where I want it to turn on and let's say 10% throttle. So it doesn't capture idle conditions. I am gonna keep my off delay, I think that is valuable here. I'll say continue to onboard log after we drop down our conditions. So if we drop below 2000 and 10% throttle, it'll continue to log for a certain period of time. Let's make that 10 seconds so it still captures a bit of information. The next thing we need to do here is populate some channels into our list. If I type in here something like RPM, we can bring that up. That'll be known as engine speed in our logging channels list. Let's give this a second. We'll double click on the actual option here and we'll bring it over. Notice that the default frequency is 50 and I can change that to whatever I'd like. So if I wanna log at a faster rate for engine speed, something like 200 Hertz, I am able to do that. But as I'm adding in my channels here, it will automatically populate them all at 50 Hertz. If I wanna go in and log something else, such as my coolant temperature, uh, we can go, or air temperature, for example, here, we can uh, type in here intake, and we should be able to find our inlet air temp, or actually we'll type in IAT here, we should be able to populate that out. Intake air temp, there we go, we can add that in here, and I don't wanna necessarily log at 50 hertz. It doesn't move that quick in most cases. So I could go here and log it at a slower rate to give me a little bit more logging space. We can be mindful of how we're populating our channels, or again, just leave them populate to these default values. So I'm just gonna add these two channels here just to briefly show you the onboard logging. So if I go here and I click save, I can save this as a name here and I can just say sample logging. So if I wanted to retrieve this for another application, let's say I'm working with two different cars with G4X systems, I could go ahead and save this. So sample logging, save that as a name and we'll click okay. Now our onboard logging is set up. Now what we're gonna have to do here is get above 10% throttle and be above 2000 RPM for it to actually work. So if we go back in here to tune, to fuel tuning specifically, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring my engine speed up here. So I'm gonna go up to two, 3000 RPM, and I'm also gonna get on the throttle here a little bit. We can see right now, we have our TPS main showing 12%, and my engine speed is roughly 2100. So it is onboard data logging. Let's go here, I'm gonna go and drop down into idle conditions, and I'll bring my throttle back down here all the way to zero. And now we should find that we have an onboard data log to retrieve. If we go up here to logging and we go here to ECU log file download, we should find that we have a file available. And we're gonna find that this actually has several files available here. And we're looking at the log file. This would be the last log file. And what we can see here being logged is engine speed versus intake air temperature. We can go in here and select this and we can delete it we can go here and download it, and that's actually what I want to do here, so we can take a look. If we go to download, that'll download this, and again, we can populate that right here to our folder. We can see it's labeled ECU log and not PC log because this is coming from the onboard logging. Now, I was connected during all of this, but if I was disconnected, it would re I'd be able to retrieve this once I plug back into the link. And we're gonna say here, do you want to open this data log for me to review, the specifically this ECU log? We're gonna say yes, and now we can see here click close, what that log represents. So we only had two channels available, engine speed, intake air temperature, and we can find here that it is populating just engine speed in this time plot. So this should hopefully make sense as to working with our data logging. This is again, very, very basic introduction, but we'll see now that we're able to either onboard log to capture in racing conditions or PC log when we're actually connected to the link 
and we want to go and review data maybe after a drive cycle or after a dyno pool. That's going to be wrapping it up here, taking a look at our data logging basics. The next tutorial, we're going to jump in and look at our basic inputs, making sure that we have things configured right so our engine can fire off and have a good chance of running properly right off the bat.